Hey guys, today's video is going to be about this new hourglass palette. I bought the leopard one and I'm going to give you my thoughts. I did a try on comparisons to the one that I have, which is, what was it called again? The sculpture palette. I'll give you comparisons and my thoughts and let you know whether I think I wasted my money because this is very expensive and I'll admit this was kind of an impulse purchase for me, but it is what it is. I'll be giving you my thoughts. Let me know if you guys bought the other hourglass palettes. If you are new, please subscribe. I just, I love makeup. It is a whole lot of fun. It's just, it's a fun hobby for me. So I thought it'd be fun to give you my thoughts on this new hourglass palette and let's get started. All right, here it is, the leopard palette. And just gotta tell you the truth. I picked this one because I like the packaging the most. I know, like, and I never do that, but I did. And these are expensive. The price has gone up. I paid $97-ish, including, like, taxes and all that. So I spent $100 on this. Not sure what I was thinking. Do I regret it slightly? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. But I do have to say this packaging is different than on the Sculpture palette. This one is, like... A heavy plastic this is a metal tin and this is a magnetic closure so you know some people have said like the plastic packaging wasn't super fancy personally I don't mind I almost prefer this but this is really really nice packaging so here is the palette three blushes one finishing powder one highlighter and one bronzer I already have mood exposure and dim light so I already knew I liked those, but I already have them and they are in the sculpture palette. So again, did I need this? No, probably not. So if you have the sculpture palette, this is what it looks like. So dim light and mood exposure are the same as the leopard palette. Let's just do some swatches. Um, and then, I mean, I can just compare it to the sculpture palette since I have that one. I did also have the ghost one years ago when that came out and I used it quite a bit and I ended up giving it to my mom when I got the sculpture palette because I just didn't feel like I needed both. And I felt like for me, I liked the colors in um, the sculpture palette better anyway. Okay, these swatches are really hard to see because the hourglass powders are definitely on the sheer side, but here are the swatches from the leopard palette that's the highlighter and i have to say in the demo i was impressed the highlighter is a lot more intense than i thought dim light you can't even see it i mean it's a finishing powder it's it's there but you can't see it this is mood exposure but i have to say this looks more pigmented on the face than it does in the swatches and then over here we have this blush is the first blush and i have to say that one seems to be more sheer but again i think it looks more pigmented on the face and then this is that middle blush. And again, it's a lot more pigmented because you'll see in the demo, I put like way too much on. And then there is the bronzer. So those are those. And then these are the three from the Sculpture palette. Um, the bronzer is a bit darker in the Sculpture palette. This other rosy blush, kind of similar to that one. Hard to say for sure in a swatch because this just looked so much more pigmented on the face but the highlighter is a lot more subtle in the sculpture palette. All right, so mood exposure, I already know I love because I use the one in the sculpture palette all the time. This highlighter is different than the sculpture palette in that it's a lot more pigmented. Dim light, it's dim light, it's a finishing powder. I've loved it for years. These two blushes, this one is more sheer. I have to say this one, like when I put it on the face, it was super, super pigmented. I kind of combined them together, but this is the more pigmented one. The bronzer, you'll see in the demo, I actually really like the bronzer on my skin tone and I like it more, I think, than the bronzer in the sculpture palette, at least like on my undertones. I think it looks better. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the palette. Um, yeah, two of the products I already had. And yeah, is it that different than this one? Hard to say because this blush is kind of similar to the two blushes. I think the biggest difference for me 
is I like the highlighter more in the Leopard palette. It's a lot more intense, which is more my style, honestly. And I like the undertones of this bronzer in the Leopard palette more than this one. I felt like this one on me just looked like a little bit muddy. Not my favorite. Um, so really for me, this palette, the things I use the most were the two finishing powders and mood exposure. <laughs> Um, and now I've got another dim light and another mood exposure. Did I need that? No, probably not. Was this a bit of a waste of money? Possibly, but I mean, it seems to be the hourglass formula that I know. Like I said, this is technically my third one of these face palettes. I have the ghost palette and I did like that one as well. Um, I end up giving that to my mom and then I do have the, what blush do I have? Where is it? I do have this blush, their full size of Brilliant Nude, which I really like. I have to say, I like the formula. It's so thin and finely milled. It's very flattering on the face. And that's where I think that the Hourglass products stand out. But do other brands also have that? Yes. Yes. For me, I think these face palettes, they're more of like a novelty. Um, but let's get into the demo and then I'll kind of wrap things up. Alrighty, let's try these on. And yeah, this is like a little hard to open. I have to remember not to grab this part. You just go like that, but it's magnetic. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to start with the bronzer, which looks pretty light. I admit it looks lighter in person than it did online, but that's fine. And you have to use a small brush because these are just small pans. Okay, it's actually giving me more pigmentation than I thought. Kind of a nice warm undertone. I think I like this undertone more than the bronzer in the sculpture palette from what I remember. Okay, a bit more bronzing. I'm actually liking this bronzer and it gives a nice glow. It looks like there's shimmer particles in the pan, but I'm not really seeing them on the face. So, all right. So the blushes, mood exposure. I already have this, but it is one of my favorite blushes. So I'm not too mad with having another one. And then these other two, let's see, what are those called? Iridescent Rose and Ethereal Flush. Let's just mix them together. Why not? We're here. That's actually, yeah, that's this one that's pretty pigmented. Okay, and then let's try the highlighter, and that one is called... Metallic strobe powder in celestial strobe light. Okay. Let's see. That's, yeah, that is actually pretty intense. All right. And I'm going to put this on the inner corner too of my eyes. Since we're here, why not? Just do this. Oh, that's pretty. I have to say this highlighter is definitely, it's more intense than I anticipated. And then dim light, which I have had many, many times. I like to use this as finishing powder to kind of blend the blush, bronzer, and highlighter all together. That's what I like to use this for. Okay. You know, I do have to say the hourglass powders are so, they're just really finely milled. All right, so that is it. I need to, I think I put on way too much blush, guys. <laughs> I need to tone this down. I was surprised, I think, I'm kind of used to hourglass blushes being a bit more subtle and this one definitely 
It took me by surprise. It's more pigmented than I thought it was. So that's on me. Okay. That has helped. Alrighty, so that is it for the look. All right, so I kind of gave you my thoughts already before the demo. I definitely put too much of the blush on. It caught me off guard. It's more pigmented than I thought, which is a good thing. Um, so overall, I have to say that Dim Light, had it many times, know that I love it. I love this highlighter. I really do. And I like this bronzer more than the one in the Sculpture palette. These blushes, I mean, they're very pretty. I definitely just need to use them more. Mood Exposure, already had it. Did I need to buy this again? Probably not. The tin packaging, it's nice for sure. I mean, it is beautiful. And yeah, kind of has this magnetic closure. But I like the Sculpture palette too, but I don't like the bronzer and the highlighter as much, at least on my skin tone. So did I need to buy this? Probably not. Um, honestly, I think these are more of like, yeah, like a novelty thing, kind of like a fancy thing you treat yourself or maybe like a nice gift you buy for someone else. Are these essentials in like a daily makeup routine for me? I don't think so. I have other products that I use for finishing powder. I'm using the Wet n Wild, um, what is it called? Hold on. The Wet n Wild Ticket to Brazil. I use this as finishing powder and it is beautiful. Um, it's really finely milled and this is like $4. And there's other brands of blush that have beautiful finely milled formulas. So I don't really think that the Hourglass formula nowadays is that unique. Is it a nice formula? It is for sure. But personally, I think these are more like collector's pieces or just, you know, something to have a little fancy treat for yourself for. That's how I treated this for me. Definitely not an essential. $100 is a lot of money for this. It really, really is. But, you know, I wanted it, so I bought it, I guess, in the words of Ariana Grande. But anyway, that is it for this video. Let us know, did you buy one of these new Hourglass palettes? If you are new, I hope you will subscribe. Check out my other videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.